All right, uh, final lesson. Congrats on those of you that made it this far. We're going to look at annuities one more time, uh, the present value annuity. So don't forget, an annuity is when you're making a regular series of payments on a set interval, like monthly or weekly, or you are borrowing money at a set interval. Generally, though, you're putting money in like to pay something off, like a car loan, and you're paying every month or every week, or you are... Um, investing money to save so maybe every month you're putting away money all right so we're going to look at present value so present value we've taken the formula and they've done some rearranging with it and again i won't get too deep into it uh you can check it out in your your textbook we'll just get to using it to keep it simple here so again present value this is like what do we start with now your textbook sometimes uses a for that but i always use pv because that's what my old textbooks used to always use all right so this is the starting amount right how much did we start with all right, R is our regular payment still. Now you notice things have moved around. Now it's one minus this, and it's the power of negative N. I can't tell you how much people forget the negative, including myself. You gotta make sure you include that minus up there. So don't forget, it's the number of compounding periods per year. I don't know why I never have that included there. And how do we co uh, calculate the number of compounding periods? We generally take the number of years that we're gonna be investing or borrowing money, and we times it by the number of compounding periods per year. All right, so to explain this one, let's just do some examples um, because it's, it'll be a lot more obvious as we do them than me trying to explain it all. Let's just check out some scenarios where this would apply. All right, so this first one's kind of an unrealistic situation, but imagine you won the lottery, right? Or imagine you got a whole bunch of money, right? Somehow, you know, your great uncle you never knew you had has left you a fortune, right? And what you want to do is say, all right, I've got all this money, but I wanna use some of it, right? But I don't want it to all be gone. So what what would I need right now? How much money should I put in the bank right now? Okay, so again, right now, how much are we gonna put the presently, right? So how much do I need now? The bank's saying, all right, we're gonna give you 5.6% interest. So we're gonna make that 0 0.056, right? Now we're gonna to have to divide it by how many compounding periods there are. So annually, so that's gonna be once a year, right? So we're just gonna divide that by one, which is just 0 0.056. All right, so nothing, no problem there. All right, so compounded annually once a year to provide me with $50,000 per year for the next 50 years. So we're going to do 50 years, all right, times once a year. So that's still 50. Now, the regular payment is like the bank paying to me $50,000. So what I want is I want it once a year, you know, I go to the bank on whatever day and they give me $50,000 out of this big chunk of money I put in the bank, but it's only gonna last me for 50 years. So how much am I gonna get, right? Or, or so how much, my bad, do I have to put in the bank right now? Now we already know how much we're gonna receive in total based on this, right? So how much do, I'm just gonna say how much money in total, we'll just put the total here. I don't wanna write the whole thing out for you. How much money would you receive in total? So. Again, we are gonna get $50,000 a year times 50 years, right? So in other words, we're hoping to get $2.5 million in total, right? So how much do I have to put in the bank right now? If I, like this is realistic in the sense that if the bank's gonna give me 5.6 interest, how much do I have to put in the bank right now that I can take out $50,000 a year for 50 years, which will be a total of $2.5 million. All right, so we're gonna use the present value formula because we wanna know how much we gotta put in right now. So the formula, oops, is R, right? Our regular payment times, now we gotta be careful, one minus one plus the interest rate to the power of negative N. I always forget that negative. Hopefully you don't, I do all the time. And I stare at my answer forever till I realize why. Oops, I'm already punching my numbers in here. Divided by I. Okay, so our present value is gonna be $50,000 is what we want our regular payment to be. Now you can flip this around, obviously, say, well, what's the regular payment if I have some money presently to put in the bank, right? So we can do that in maybe the next question. All right, so when we're pun punching this in our calculator, the first thing we wanna do is this, the one plus the interest rates, the one plus the 0 0.056, start with that, then do it to the power of negative 50. All right, and then we have to go, well, what's one minus that number? And then we have to divide it by that interest rate. So you gotta do some real calculator uh, acrobatics here, and then times it by 50,000. Okay, so it's a lot of calculator work. That means right now I would have to put in $834,299. So if, you know, magically $834,299 fell into my lap and I could get that interest rate, I could go to the bank, put in the bank right now, and every year I could take out $50,000 and it would last me 50 years till it was all gone. 
So now, one more thing. What about the interest, right? This is how much I'm going to get in total. This is how much I have to put in the bank presently right now to get that much total. What about the interest? How much interest do I earn? Well, let's just take the big number minus the little number, right? I'm, bank's going to give me this much over the course of the entire annuity. I'm going to put this much in the bank right now. All right, if I subtract those, this is how much interest I'm getting. 1.6, you know, six five million dollars, seven hundred one dollars. So that's how much interest I'll get. So it's more than I'm getting more interest than what it was even worth to begin with. So you can see this is like when people talk about how the rich get richer and how money makes money. This is kind of how it works, right? This is the idea: is if you have money, you can just put it in the bank and make money off your money, right? So having some money to begin with kind of puts you a leg up here. All right, let's check out a more realistic scenario because I'm guessing we can't all count on uh, winning the lottery here or whatnot. But again, if someone wins the lottery, this is generally what they encourage them to do. Instead of just blowing all that money, put it in the bank right now and then take out a little bit each year and it'll last you a lot longer and you'll get interest on it so you'll, you, you'll, you'll make more money off of it, right? So that's what this scenario kind of means. Let's look at another one. All right, let me just get my list going down the side. Present value, my regular payment my interest rate and the number of payments I'll have to make. So you want to buy a laptop. Let's be clear. I want to buy a laptop now. If this was a test question, I make sure I include the word now to make it clear it's present value right now. That laptop's going to cost $2,500. So we'll say tax and everything's included. Okay. So that's the present value. This is more of a realistic situation. A lot of stuff I bought when you're, I was your age, I played music, right? Played guitar and uh, I didn't have the money to buy everything outright. But I go to the music store and they would, and same with a computer, I did this before too, right? They would do a credit plan. And once you guys are adults, I mean, you can do this. I wouldn't recommend it unless you know exactly how much you're going to be paying because this is how people get ripped off. But you could figure out the interest yourself. So I go in, all right, let's say it's a, this is a laptop. It's going to cost $2,500 on credit. And I'm going to make the monthly payments over two years. So again, monthly, we're going to do it 12 times a year for two years. So right away, we can do this, right? 12 times a year times two years, we're gonna have to make 24 payments. We want to know what's the regular payment going to be, right? And again, compounded monthly knows how that ties together with that monthly there. What will our monthly payment be? What's our regular payment going to be? Now the interest rate, we got to watch out, right? They're charging us 15%. That's a lot. Cause this is how a lot of, this is how cars, this is how car dealerships make money. Music equipment stores make money. Uh, furniture stores make money. A lot of these stores aren't really set up like they sell a product, but their money isn't made so much from selling the product. Most of their profit is made similar to a bank. They're basically loan businesses, car, car dealerships, furniture stores. They're really at their heart, a loan business, and they're making interest off of you. Okay. So 0.15 divided by 12, which is going to give me 0.0125. And, uh, and that's not being cynical. That's how these companies make their money, right? All right, so here's our formula. Present value, again, the regular interest rate, a regular rate, uh, one minus one plus the interest rate, the power of negative n, don't forget that negative, divided by i. Now again, we can divide both sides by this entire bracket here to isolate the r, which is what we wanna solve for. So I'm gonna flip it around, take my present value, and divide by that, right? All right, there we go. All right, so our regular payment's gonna be, we're gonna have to take $2,500, and again, I remember doing this with uh, very specifically one guitar I bought, having to sit there and figure this all out at my desk. They said, all right, here's the interest rate. And I wanted to make sure they weren't ripping me off. And like, how much is this really going to cost me? Because they don't want to tell you all the details, right? They want you to sign up and think, oh, this is a great deal. I got to pay like 20 bucks a month or something for, for the next you know, 100 years or whatever. And all of a sudden you realize, oh my gosh, how much is this really going to cost? Especially those furniture, like rent to own stores. You know, they, they really get you. I'm not trying to disparage anyone. I'm just saying they really overcharge people. All right, so when we punch this all out, the regular payment's going to be approximately $121.22. That's our monthly payment. All right, so you might go, well, that's not so bad, right? We're going to have to pay that much a month. All right, so now you might go, well, that's cool, no big deal, like 121 bucks a month, right? I can handle that. But how much are you really paying? So let's think about this here. Right? Like how much did I really pay? Let's put that here. How much did you pay in total? That's the real question. And this is what people don't look at and this is what they don't want to tell you because you go, oh, I could afford a hundred bucks right now. No problem. Right? Well, we're doing $121 and 22 cents and we have to make 24 payments, right? 12, this number here, right? 12, we, 12 months times two years. So when we do that, we're really paying $2,909 and 28 cents, right? So, if we subtract 
the $2,500, that was the cost of the computer, right? So this is how much we're really paying. That's that answer, right? How much did we really pay? We're paying that much for a $2,500 computer. So you might think, oh, that's okay. I, I don't mind paying that much interest, right? So our interest would be, well, let's subtract those two numbers. 2909, 28, minus the $2,500. So the interest we're paying, which they always try to hide from you, they always try to hide these last total numbers from you because they just want you to focus on 121 bucks a month, right? So you're gonna pay them $409.28 interest. Okay, so there's really three numbers always that we can look at, right? What's the real amount? What's the original amount, right? What's the real amount with, with interest on it? And what's your monthly payment, okay? So if you're cool with that, then you know. If you're like, whoa, that interest is way too high, I'm not gonna pay that, right? I can just borrow the money cheaper or I can go get a cheaper interest rate instead of 15%. Maybe I can borrow it from the bank or my parents or something at a lower interest rate and end up paying less. And you could sit down and calculate how much that'll be. So this is a really good example, uh, kind of realistic question that you could actually figure this stuff out. Because as you get older, you're gonna start borrowing money for certain things sometimes. All right, one final question. All right, it says you wanna save to buy a car, but let's make this clear. Let's just say you wanna buy, you're gonna buy a car, right? You buy a car right now. We're buying a car. We're going to the dealership, we're gonna buy a car. I need one to get to work or whatever. All right, so I've got some money for a down payment already. Now we don't need to worry about that right away, right? We'll figure that out at the end, okay? So that's kind of a red herring, the down payment. So the down payment is just how much you kind of give them right off the bat, and then they minus that off the price, and then the rest is what you're gonna borrow from them, which they call financing, okay? So when they say, what, you know, we're gonna finance the rest. So I'm gonna pay $6,000 to them, and the rest I'm gonna finance. Okay, so I got $6,000 saved up. Right now, I, I, and this is, this is a good realistic situation, because you're saying, okay, how expensive a car can I afford right now? I know based on my job or my budget or whatever, I can afford $300 a month for the next five years. I feel comfortable with that. No problem, right? Okay, the bank right now or the car dealership, this is where you can shop around and look at the different interest rates. They're all, you know, this one's offering 4.2% per annum, which just means per year, compounded monthly. So that means every month, right? What price of car can I afford right now? So that's what we're looking at. Like how expensive, before I go to the dealership lot, I wanna know how much money I can spend, right? So what price of car can I afford? All right, so let's see what we're on. We're looking for the present value of the car, not what it'll be worth in the future, right now, PV, present value. We know that we can spend $300 a month, so that's gonna be our regular payment. The interest rate is 4.2%, so 0 0.042. We're gonna divide that by 12 months, right? And when we do that, we get, I think, 0 0.0035. There we go. Now, the number of payments we have to make, we're gonna do five payments, or five years, sorry, five years, and uh, 12, we're gonna make 12 payments, right? Once a month, so that's gonna be 60 payments. Now, right now, before I even get going, I can figure out how much I'm gonna pay in total, right? Like, what's the total I'm gonna pay, right? Well, I know I'm gonna be paying $300 a month times 60 months, right? So 300 times 60 means right now I'm paying $18,000. So I can afford an $18,000 car, right? Plus, well, we also gotta factor that interest, right? And let's not forget, plus, I'm also adding to that my $6,000, right? that I'm gonna use as a down payment. So the total I'm spending is gonna be $24,000. Now, let's see how much actual a car I can afford because I gotta borrow the money, right? So this is how much the total paid, which I got written right up here, right? Total paid, okay? So total paid, $2,400. Now, let's find out how expensive a car we can afford. So the present value, again, the regular interest rate, one minus one plus i to the power of negative n divided by i. So present value of the car, we're gonna pay a $300 payment, one minus one plus that interest rate to the power of negative 60 divided by that interest rate. All right, so carefully go through your calculator, punch that all in, and when you do, what do I got? $16,210 is how much of an expense of a car I can afford right now. If I add my $6,000 down payment, right, right now, the car I can afford is this much money. Okay, so this right now is how much I can afford. So I can afford, or you can afford. So if we go to the car dealership right now, now you're like, well, wait, why is that less than that? Because remember, we're paying the car dealership interest, right? We are paying them interest, so they're gonna make money off us. So if we wanna know how much interest there is, let's just subtract these. All right, so calculate the interest. Let's just take, you know, I, had, I gave them $24,000 but the car was 
all together, right? And however many cents, I think I just rounded it there. So we're gonna say it's approximately the interest I paid them. It's 1,790 dollars yeah, $1, in interest, okay? So that's how much they made off me. So again, car dealerships, furniture stores, different stores like this, I'm not saying it's an evil thing, but that's how they make a lot of their money. Their money is made not just from selling you the car, but to finance the car, which means they're loaning you money for the car and you pay them interest, right, as you pay it back. So sometimes you get a better deal. The car dealership, sometimes you buy the car, but you go to the bank and you get the loan instead, and then the bank, you use that money to pay for the car and you get a cheaper interest rate, okay? But see how you can calculate that just by using these formulas. All right, so give the work a try and thanks a lot.